Hey guys, my name is Matt Young and I'm a high school art teacher in Pickerington, Ohio. I have been the ceramic sculpture teacher here for about 26 years now. And one of my favorite projects to do with my beginning sculpture kids is a 3D graffiti project. I think it is a fun, successful project that allows all students to be able to experience sculpture and grasp concepts easily while not being too afraid because they are uh, using words and letters uh, that they should be used to. Um, and during this time of hybrid and virtual learning, I have also seen great success with my students at home during this. So I'm going to walk you through the lesson and occasionally I'll pop back in to say a few comments. Uh, but this is exactly kind of how I walk my students through uh, teaching uh, this lesson. And hopefully you guys uh, get a brand new project out of this and try it in your classroom. I'll be back in a few. So I spend about two to three days planning the work with the students in class and give them a worksheet. I tell them they can use any word as long as it has school appropriate language in a minimum of five characters. And I do show a PowerPoint on the history of graffiti and have some fun with that one and show them some well, different styles. Four inch box by an eight inch box. Uh, so hopefully you have a ruler at home and you can draw. When you're doing a graffiti plan, you would like for your plan to fill up the whole box. Now, not many of you have probably drawn graffiti before. So in the first box, okay, so in the first box, go ahead and think of the word you want to write. Remember the word that you want to write needs to have five characters in it. And again, they can be numbers or letters or symbols. Uh, the letters should overlap. So you want to remember that the letters need to overlap. And also you want to fill the entire box. All right, so fill the entire box. So for example, in my first box here, it can be very sketchy. So I'm going to use my last name because it's young and that is five letters. So there's a Y, there's an O, there is a U, there is an N, and there is a G. And so you can see by just me writing in regular print letters, the word young, I have pretty much filled up the entire box. My letters are all touching each other and um, they aren't overlapping quite yet, but the first box can be very sketchy. All right, second box. You can look up stuff on the internet. You can actually use your Chromebooks to trace. Remember, this is not a drawing class. So if you want to find letters on the internet and trace, that is fine. But we now wanna pick a style of graffiti and we want to go with that style. So as you start to write, I'm gonna just use a regular block style for this first one. Try to make sure your letters are really, really, really thick. All right, so here's my first letter again, thick, meaning like it is bigger than your finger, so you can see how thick that one is. And back to they need to overlap here a little bit, so your sculpture will really only be successful if you can overlap your letters. And again, I'm trying to fill up the whole box. So inside the box a little bit. So your second attempt at lettering should be a little thicker than your first attempt. And you should really try to get that graffiti style going with your thick letters going all the way across. All right, now you're going to need to do three sketches and one final. So here again is my uh, third attempt. Now this one, I'm going to try to get a little bit crazy. I'm going to start trying to do like a wild style. This is something I saw on the internet that I liked. All right, so I'm going to try to get my Y doing some interesting things here. And I'm going to get. So that one now has a little bit more style. If there's something that you want to put into your drawing, that is also fine. So say you're trying to maybe make, you're trying to make like an O and you want to make the O look like a basketball or something like that. Um, that that's okay too if you can't draw. If you can't draw basketball, you can lay out your plans and actually write words in there. Like if you're trying to draw something, you know, and I can't tell what it is, you can write that it's a basketball. If you're really struggling to make something, for example, say you're really bad 
again, this is not a drawing class, but you want to make something that looks like a golf club, you know, write those things in there. You can use writing to be able to tell me uh, what it is in your drawings. But for Friday, you should try to have a drawing done that fills up a whole box. You want to have three sketches and then one good final drawing that you are going to make a sculpture out of. So one more time, three sketches. All right, guys, so first interruption here is I want to talk a little bit about what I was saying there in the planning. Um, I This isn't a drawing class for my students, so I do allow them to, we have Chromebooks um, so they can trace letters. We, we do spend a little bit of time drawing and planning in class. Um, but they really are encouraged to have a focal point and three items for a theme. So that is one of the things I focus on. Uh, the theme can be anything. For example, I'm going to hold this up. This is one of my older ones, but we have tigers here. So it's for the Pickerington Tigers. Um, it is obviously orange and uh, black striped. They have the eye of the tiger, <laughs> uh, ears of the tiger. And if you can look here, it's trying to get the body of the tiger and make kind of skinnier letters. Also, shameless plug, one of the other cool things is if these students are making sculptures, again, we're focusing on the letters and you can see Eeyore here, but I do have another presentation about 3D printing and um, we also do a little 3D printing thing and you can watch my other presentation for that. But again, since it's beginning sculpture, we're mainly focusing on the uh, letters here, uh, having three items for a theme and students can use a 3D printing option to print some more complicated stuff. Since it's Three items for a theme. I talked about the theme last week. In other words, if you're doing a basketball theme, you should have basketball stuff on it. Unicorns, you should have unicorn stuff on it. Beach would have sand and waves and stuff like that. So since this is my last name and I'm an artist, I'm going to use my little art character that's got a pencil and a paint can and black and yellow is the color of sunny setup which is a program that i run here now i for this assignment the second assignment that is due at home this week um that involves your clay is i need to take this image and transfer it onto this clay so i need to take this image and transfer it onto this clay now you can do it one of two ways one is you can put the clay directly onto here Take some sort of sharp object, either the tools that came in your kit or a pencil or something like that, and you can poke directly through your clay, and it'll transfer onto the clay. Now, I do not want to ruin my drawing because I spent some time making this thing, so I'm actually going to take a piece of tracing paper and a Sharpie, and I am going to sit here and trace around this thing. traced and so you guys can see this i'm going to move this out of the way and sit this on here which is this is why it's important that you guys have a four by eight um inch uh block so that your letters should fit on your block now again i'm just using a pencil you guys can use any other sharp object you're going to sit here and you're going to poke through your drawing as best you can and this is why i did not want to ruin my original drawing i'm going to sit here and again i'm going to go pretty quickly i would like for you guys to take your time but i want you to see this in and there you have it it should be transferred to your clay so now I have traced my pattern onto the clay. The next step is going to be to remove the excess clay that I don't need. Now, we do not want to remove any of this stuff from the inside of our pieces. So one more time, do not remove the stuff from the inside. So nothing on the inside of this U, this N, and this G, and the Y. We do not want to remove anything in there. Uh, I call this the birthday cake method, and it might be easy to remember. So what you want to do is we want to start to reveal the outside shape again, no the insides, and using either like a knife, a butter knife at home or whatever, or if you want to use one of the tools in your toolkits, you are going to cut straight down. Again, this is why I call it the birthday cake. You're going to cut straight down like you would a piece of cake, 
and straight down right on those lines that you just drew. And if you cut straight down, you should be able to remove your clay just like a piece of cake. So again, straight down and straight down <clears throat> one little piece of birthday cake at a time. Take your time, work your way around your entire piece. And you should be able to start to see your sculpture being revealed. All right, you should start to see your letters appear. Of course, I say this, and now I can't get this little birthday cake piece out. There we go. All right, you should be able to start to see the outside of your piece. Um And there you have it. <clears throat> Keep your clay off to the side. You can put this in your extra scrap bag and you now should see your letters nice and clean all around the outside. You can take your knife or wooden tool and kind of fix up the edges a little bit, but that is good for the front. Exterior of the uh, sculpture cut out and we did not cut out the inside. So now what we're going to do is use a couple other tools. Uh, this one is a hollowing tool. It has kind of a, a little opening. It works a lot like an ice cream scoop. There's usually a square edge and a round edge. And in your toolkits, you should have something that looks like that. And a uh, this is a wooden sculpting knife. Uh, so what we're going to try to do is now we need to make our letters appear 3D. This is a 3D class and we're going to use a subtractive method to try to take away some of the clay and make the letters pop out. So with your hollowing tool, you are going to come into these areas that you do need to make um, not so much a hole right now. We're not gonna carve all the way through, but I would say carve to about a half or a quarter down. All right, so about a half to a quarter down. Go right up to where you drew those lines with your uh, needle or some other tool and you want to carve and scoop as you guys can see it works a lot like an ice cream scoop you want to scoop this out and so the first thing you're going to do is use your these are called riveting tools if you want the fancy name for them so the first thing you're going to want to do again is use the riveting tool and you're going to carve about a half or a quarter of the way through. All right, guys, as you can see by the shadows here, I've carved about a half to a quarter of the way through all of those things. Now, if you remember from my drawing, this O here is going to become a little creature. And we are going to talk about that a little bit later. So now that I've used my ribboning tool, I now want to take my wooden tool. And now I need to just kind of wherever the letters actually touch each other, I'm going to take this wooden tool. And again, you're not going to cut all the way through, but we need to kind of carve into the letters. As you can see here, that G is really starting to stand out apart from the end. So your job is now to become an artist and you're going to start using the sculpting tool you can use a little bit of water if you want but in all actuality i've found that if you let the clay dry out a little bit while you're working on it the carving actually gets a little bit better so i'm going to use this wooden tool now to kind of smooth out all of my little lines and imperfections get into some of the little details that i couldn't get into with the riveting tool and I'm going to use this to get rid of all the little dots and make my letters stand out. All right guys, so there you have it. I took some time and used the wooden tool and the ribboning tool and I have carved and shaped. And what I really like to point out is 
um, if you, you know, pick up the wooden sculpting tool and I really want you guys to be done with the front. So that means there is going to be no little dots. Notice all the dots from where I poke through are completely finished. I have taken the time to carve about a quarter to the halfway through my letters. And I have taken the time to kind of smooth everything out again. I, this is going to be my monster right here. Uh, but all of my letters have no dots on them. Those dots are now gone. And I have taken the time with my wooden sculpting tool to go through here and smooth all the edges. I want your front to be completely finished. Then you're going to take a second and you're going to clean up your top. You're going to clean up your sides. And you're going to clean up your bottom. All right. Once your front sides, tops and bottoms look all good and you feel that you've gotten rid of all the dots and everything looks nice and smooth, you're going to then flip your sculpture over and you can kind of already see I've done this. If you still have your tracing paper, you can reuse it. You can just flip it the opposite direction and lay it back over top or if you need to trace your drawing again you can retrace your drawing and then flip it upside down you will lay it over here you will take your wooden tool or sorry your metal needle tool again and you will start poking through and you will transfer your drawing to the back and you will repeat the process over on the back as far as hollowing and smoothing to make your back look just as good as your front. So you have taken the time to finish the front of your sculpture, you've checked on all the sides of your sculpture, and you have done the back of your sculpture. So the next part I am going to talk about is how to leather harden or stiffen up your sculpture and how to put additions on. So in my case, if you remember from my drawings there, I am going to put a little monster up here in the drawing. Uh, right here on this little guy. So I'm going to attach the pencil and eyeball and sculpt in some little teeth and a hand. Uh, so I'm going to talk about how to do that. But first I would like to talk about uh, how to leather harness your sculpture. Now notice that the sculpture as I hold it is not really like bending or falling apart. It is pretty stiff in nature. So in order to get your clay to this stiff part, and this goes for at school or at home, so if you'd like your clay to stiffen up a little bit, you got a couple different options. You can leave it out um, just to air dry for a couple hours if you're at home and it will stiffen up a little bit. If you are at school, you can leave it overnight in one of the cupboards. Or if you are in a hurry, you can grab a hair dryer and about five to ten minutes on each side with a hair dryer. And you will notice that your clay is no longer like squishy, but it is stiff enough and that is called leather hard. So if you'd like to get your clay leather hard, you could do one of those three things. Leave it out for a couple hours if you're at home, leave it overnight if you're at school in the cupboard, or you can use a hair dryer if you would like to. All right, so <clears throat> I would like to add some pieces and parts um, to my monster. So first thing I wanna do, is start carving in my monster so give me a second and i'm going to go through and carve some of those things all right guys as you can see here i've made a little eyeball some fingers and my pencil and i've carved out the mouth and if you notice i've carved out a little bit of my g over here all right now when your clay is leather hard you are able to scoop out them 
uh, scoop out the, the holes a lot easier so I can scoop it out. I'm going to leave some of these spaces still not all the way through just because I want my sculpture to be a little bit stronger. But when it is leather hard, that is a time that you are able to actually cut all the way through your sculpture. Now, if I were just to leave these little bits and parts over here, uh, like I just put them in there, they would fall out. As you can see, they easily came out. If I want something to actually like be stuck to the clay, you're going to need to get yourself a little bit of water, like so. You're going to want to grab any one of these little tools. And in the notes you are supposed to have read, there is a little method called slipping and scoring. And slipping and scoring is scoring is you making a little rough area in the clay. So I roughed up the clay there and I roughed up the clay here. Then I took a little water and a little clay and I made a little paste by mixing it up. It's almost like runny peanut butter. So I mixed a little water and a little of clay together, like runny peanut butter with my scrap clay. And I'm going to stick those two together. And now that I've stuck together, if you've ever seen tiling done on one of the home shows on the Home Improvement channel at home, uh, it's almost like using like mortar or something to stick tile down, but it's called scoring and slipping. So if I want to stick my pencil now to my sculpture, I'm going to score up the back of where I want the pencil to be. I'm going to score up my sculpture where I want my clay to be. I'm going to mix up a little bit of this water paste stuff. So there you go, water paste. And it's slip. All right. So I'm going to put slip all over the back of this guy. And I'm going to stick it down like so. Make sure it's stuck down really nice and tight. All right, that goes there. All right, now I'm going to go in the process of sticking the fingers on. I'll be back in a second. All right, and there you guys can see by scoring and slipping, I am able to attach all of my little items, and they are not going to fall off my sculpture. I've taken a second to smooth them and stick them down, and they are all. So you guys have made the front of your sculpture and you've taken the time to score and slip and put any additions. As you can see, I got my little creature guy from my drawing right there. I really took my time to put the spray paint, put a tongue, give a pencil, give him some fingers and all that jazz. And I'm going to put the extras on, uh, paint them up really nice. I am also taking the time to clean up the back and make sure the back is all nice and neat. So the next thing you want to do after you have completely worked on your sculpture is you are going to have some extra clay left over. All right, so you're gonna take your clay and like I have already done, you're gonna to try to like pound it all together with your hands, kind of squish it, and you should be able to make a block. If you are having trouble squishing the clay together with your hands, you can actually pound it against the table or against a kind of a canvas board if you've got something at home. Uh, but the idea is, is you are going to try to now make a base uh, for your project. So in my case, give me a second here and I am going to try to get this as flat as I can by hand. All right, now I have really taken the time to try to get this as best as I can into a somewhat flat state. And I'm gonna lift up my camera here a second so you can see. I've tried to get it as flat as I can and I've tried to get it thin and even as best as I can with my hand. Now I can't go any further with my hand. So I'm going to pull out a rolling pin and you guys may have seen this from the first video where we tried to make our block the same size. Um, so I want to roll this out. Now, don't roll it out crazy thin, but I am going to take the time to kind of roll it out in both directions. So I'm going to take it one way, and I'm going to try to roll it out the other direction. I want to try to keep even pressure on it. This is a trick, even pressure over the whole thing, all right? And I would say you're trying to get it a little bit skinnier than your finger, maybe about the width of a pencil. So if you happen to have a pencil sitting at home, you can take a pencil and sit it next to your project. And if your clay is about as thin as a pencil, then you are doing pretty good as far as the thickness of the base of your sculpture. So you're trying to get to the base. Here you go. 
Now, everyone's base is going to be different. Some people will want to cut out a circle in their base uh, because maybe they're having a basketball theme. Some people have cut out in the shape of a country. Some people have cut out a seashell, um, a road, whatever the case may be. The base is completely up to you. Here is what you need to have for a base. One, your base should be fairly even and thin. Again, about the width of a pencil that you are using as a measurement. Number two, your sculpture needs to be able to fit on it because obviously you are going to put your sculpture onto the base. So you have to have some room in order to put your sculpture. You don't want it crazy big so it overpowers your sculpture. You don't want it like nuts wide. You want it this like big enough so that is barely fitting your sculpture. You got a little bit of overhang on both sides and that it is the shape that you want if you wanted a heart or a basketball or otherwise. Now, in my case, it is pretty easy. I am going to take a ruler. All right. I just want my mind to be square. I There's some scoring and slipping to the paste. And then you're going to stick your sculpture down to the base so it sticks. So a little intermission here, guys, is to tell you a little bit about the uh, what's going on here with the sculpture. Um, my in-class students would use a regular sculpture clay. We get it from a local clay company here. Um, and my kids that were home learning virtually used an air dry clay. And again, you can buy any brand you want. We happen to get it from a local clay company, you know, support the local businesses type of deal here. Students are in class. Would uh, I finish it with acrylic paints? Um, I teach a lot about color mixing, color theory, warm, cool, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, stuff like that. And you're going to see here in the video that the virtual students were encouraged to use whatever means necessary that they had uh, to paint their projects because we were unable to ship clay or uh, paint home to them just the clay and the tools. So either method is fine. I've had students. I offer extra credit for them to also be creative with uh, materials as far as finishing. So um, students have brought in coffee beans, uh, moss, grass, sand, glitter, spray paint. Uh, there's been all kinds of various things, seashells to finish all of this off. Again, it's all about their creativity and kind of showing a theme or fun kind of mood with their graffiti. Um, so have fun with this. You can glaze or do whatever you want, but it's, you know, obviously finding about how the students want to finish their work uh, to show their personality takes about 24 to 48 hours to completely dry out your clay so you are going to leave this clay sitting preferably like in a nice sunny spot where it's not going to get broken uh, windowsill or anywhere you can also hit it with a warm hair dryer for a while to kind of speed up the process but you want it to be you know pretty hard pretty solid after the things dry so we're going to talk a little bit about finishing. Now, finishing is up to you. I think, and you guys can tell me if I'm wrong, but I think I provided you with like a brush in uh, at home. Now, it would be great if you could run to the store or maybe you even have some form of paints lying somewhere around the house. So you can obviously take paint. Uh, there is this, you know, simple stuff you can buy at Michael's, Walmart, or any other craft store. It doesn't need to be terribly expensive. You guys can even use house paint if you have some of that stuff left over. Um, there's these watercolor sets. They're super cheap. They're also at Walmart and most of the local stores uh, that you guys can paint on your sculpture with. Um, but I understand a lot of you guys will not have access to a lot of materials. So some other things to consider that you can use when you're painting your project. Um, you can use uh, markers. Uh, the clay will accept markers, so you guys can use markers to paint on your project. Um, Sharpies are also a type of marker that would work. You can even use colored pencils. Colored pencils will, you know, and crayons will, it'll take longer, but you can see they will eventually draw on there. In the absolute worst case scenario is if you are just left with a simple little pencil, okay, well, that's fine. Even if you're left with a simple pencil, you can use, you know, the pencil to kind of highlight some areas. Maybe you want some darks down in between, so you can highlight the areas in between to make them appear dark and stand out. But this this part is going to kind of be your 
creative portion of it. I would like for you to paint the front of the sculpture. I would like for you to paint the base of the sculpture. And I would like for you to paint the back of the sculpture. You do not have to paint down here in the bottom whatsoever. Because next week you are going to actually take a picture of the front and of the back and show it to me. One other thing to consider while you guys are doing the painting on this is you would like one area to stand out of your sculpture when you are done painting it. And that is going to be your focal point. And I'm going to show you a couple examples of a couple other sculptures. So here is one that is about, oops, that's the backside, sorry. Here's one that's about the beach, and you can see they painted it with beaches and waves and a sunset. But see how they made the sea stand out in beach? That is a focal point. So they did a nice, lovely beach painting, but the sea is standing out, and it's the focal point. Uh, this student here uh, painted theirs out um, to make it look like red rain boots and raindrops. And you can see they painted the eye blue here to stand out from all the other letters. So I am going to end up painting my monster and having it look differently. But once again, as you guys can see here, you're going to finish painting the front and the tops and the sides and everything. And then you will paint one object to stand out differently. So guys, thank you for joining me for my presentation on 3D graffiti. Um, I've been doing this for about 10 years now, this particular project, and the kids really do seem to love it. Uh, they like the fact that the letters are not you know, it, it's not intimidating for them to do for a first project. Uh, they like the creativity behind it. And like I said, I've seen everything, you know, from sports to video games. You know, it's it's limitless with what the kids will uh, come up with. So uh, if you have any questions, feel free to email me. Uh, you can also check out our website for any links that may help. You can go to centralartblog.blogspot.com. Again, shameless plug. And I hope you guys have a great conference. And uh, we'll see you later on down the road.